So our audience knows and respects your impressive career as a public servant that goes beyond just being governor of Wisconsin, but what inspired you to pursue a life of public service? You weren't always in this life. No, although as a kid, I always loved, um, I was a bit of a geek in the sense that I thought of our, our founders as superheroes. I loved history. I ate it up. I think as a, a young kid, right after Disney opened, my parents took me down to Disney uh, World in Florida, and uh, the Hall of the Presidents was the place I was most intrigued with. Oh, that should have been a dead giveaway, because I loved history. I, I loved thinking about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. It wasn't until years later, my dad uh, in a small town was a minister. My mom was a part-time bookkeeper. We didn't have any money to travel around the country. So it wasn't until I was an adult that I got to go to Independence Hall in Philadelphia. But it was like, that was like the Justice League for me. Those were my superheroes. And so growing up, I remember as a kid, little kid, eight, seven, eight years old, watching with my dad, Ronald Reagan, speak at the 1976 uh, GOP uh, convention where he conceded, but everyone watching and my father at home as well said, that should have been the nominee. And uh, as a young man, I was 12 when Ronald Reagan ran for president in 1980. And I was just transformed by him. Um, not just because of his values as a conservative or even as a Republican, but as an optimist as well. This guy was shining city on the hill. Uh, and then a few years later, I had the honor to go to Washington, D.C. as part of a program the American Legion puts on called Boys Nation. I'd done based Boys State, Boys Nation. Was bummed out because we weren't able to meet Ronald Reagan on that trip. He was actually, it's the one week he was in that summer and for something to do with his uh, colon surgery, but was completely mesmerized by history and in particular by Ronald Reagan. He was my president and he restored faith to, in the American dream during my time as a child. Well, that's really cool. We've got a book on Reagan right here behind us in the studio. I think he's transformed a lot of people's lives. Yeah, we sure miss his, his voice, but his wisdom lives on. And, you know, along those lines, uh, Governor Walker, you, uh, your story there in terms of how Reagan influenced you illustrates the power of even if it's inadvertent or indirect, meaningful mentorship. And uh, what you're doing now with Young America's Foundation is inspiring youth the same way that Reagan, President Reagan inspired you. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, a little bit about uh, what are some of the ways that Young America's Foundation is helping to build a better future for our country and what are you seeing and hearing from the youth of this generation right now? Yeah, great point. In fact, Ronald Reagan said it well many times in the past, and that was, he said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You don't get it passed on to you in the bloodstream. You have to stand up and fight for it and defend it and then pass it on to the next generation to do exactly the same thing. And so he forewarned about this. You know, his farewell address in 1989 talked about restoring our sense of a, a pride in America, but that we hadn't reinstitutionalized it. He made a plea to parents going into the 1990s uh, to, to focus more on American history and shared uh, American uh, shared culture, uh, civic rituals, like saying the pledge and standing for the national anthem. We've seen the ill effect of people not following that years and decades later. Uh, the good news is there's hope. I mean, that's what I learned from Ronald Reagan. And even though we oftentimes look, particularly at Generation Z, and say, oh, you know, all is destroyed, uh, the fact of the matter is the work that we do at Young America's Foundation, yaf.org, if people are interested, with college, high school, and now middle school kids, is to really train them to be leaders in that fight for freedom. Um, the left tries to intimidate them, just like they tried to intimidate me years ago, sending 100,000 protesters to take over our state capitol. That's why they, as you, Kelly, you mentioned the recall, they did all those things to try and intimidate us. They're doing exactly the same thing to young people on campus, at school, in the classroom, in their dorms, and frank, frankly, even on social media. The good news is there's a lot of brave students. The number one thing we hear at conferences from students is not just how cool the speakers are or the breakout sessions, it's realizing they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And so that's the good news. We've seen it even in a number of uh, polls that we've done recently that show some, some reasons for optimism. Yeah, share with us what you're seeing in those polls. What are the young people of America telling you? Yeah, you know, despite what you hear from the corporate media out there, uh, the elitist in New York and Washington, uh, there is some good news on the horizon. Number one issue, we did a nationwide poll a few weeks ago, 
of college and high school age uh, students across the country, so not just kids we work with, and we found the economy was top on the list of their concerns. Mm -hmm. Despite what Biden says, despite what others say, they're concerned about the cost of gas and housing and food. They're concerned about all sorts of other things out there, and, and they can see it just like the rest of us can. It also is interesting, there's a fundamental sense of fairness so when you ask about things like, should racial quotas be used for hiring and for college admissions? Amazingly, uh, students overwhelmingly think that's not fair, including if you break it out by race. Remember, this is a, a sample nationwide, a random sample. And so even when you do the cross tabs, it's not just white students, it's black students, Hispanic students, all think that that's fundamentally not fair. Similarly, when we talk about women's sports, overwhelmingly young people believe it's not fair for someone who was born biologically as a as a boy, to be competing in varsity sports against people who were born biologically as a young woman. And so that gives us hope that we just got to get better at articulating our conservative views, not just from a point of logic, which we should never concede, but tell it from emotional and fairness terms, appeal to the moral superiority that our ideas have over those on the left. And I think we can make inroads with young people. And that's what we're doing, not only at conferences, we have the, for example, the largest lecture series in the country when it comes to right of center speakers. And the cool news is, in fact, if people are watching on, on YouTube, they'll know yaf or excuse me, yaf.org is the website, but YAF TV, Y-A-F TV. We now have a billion views of our, wow. our uh, wow. programming of lectures and nearly a million and a half subscribers. So we are making inroads. I think young people are hungry to hear the truth. Yeah, that's definitely the communication mechanism for these next generations, right? These video shorts and anything yep. digital that's on their hands. Uh, that's how you reach them. I think that's really fantastic. Going back to those values of YAF, free enterprise, individual freedom, it's good to know that the next generation's coming up. They feel that intrinsically. Like you said, it's not in their blood, but somehow it's getting passed down. I think that's really great. Um, I'd like you to tell us about your first attempt to enter public service. It came at a fairly young age because you're dealing with young people now, um, but yeah. you weren't immediately successful. I think that's really important for people to know because it seems like we're in this um, everything should just come easy. Happiness is right at my fingertips. And if I have to struggle for anything, then it must be going bad or wrong. And we don't often hear the stories of people really having to persevere at things. Could you share with us that story? No, you're exactly right. I mean, that's the American story right there, right? It's it's resilience. And that's right. Sadly, we've seen the last few years with COVID and the shutdowns, uh, some of the people hurt the most were kids who not only physically weren't in school, hanging out with their friends, oftentimes having to be at home while their, kid, their parents had to work, uh, but also just didn't learn about uh, the truth about American and world history to see that, that we, we persevered and that uh, brought us back, whether it was simple things like overcoming the Spanish flu a, a century ago, uh, or just the, the trials and tribulations, two world wars, a civil war, all the way back to the Revolutionary War. So in our case, it really is about helping uh, these students understand, first and foremost, like I said, when they come to conferences, they're not alone. There's other young people like them. Uh, the whole goal of the left is intimidation. And what you, you can, and, and you know this, having been in the political field, what people do, and, and now particularly in the social media world that we live in, is if they disagree with you, they call you racist, sexist, transphobic, neanderthal. It doesn't matter what the topic is. They just throw those out there. And, and sadly, too many people who profess to be conservatives tend to back down. But what we found is, and one of the cool things why I mentioned those social media numbers are so high, is um, one of our great speakers is Ben Shapiro as an example. He and others now have followed his lead. Uh, they spend more than half of their time taking questions from the audience at these campus lectures. They let anyone who's opposed to them raise their hand and go to the front of the line. What's super about that, one, it's interesting, but, but more specifically, people on campus have heard these leftist ideas that the questioners bring up. Mm. What they haven't heard is a reasonable, rational uh, counter to that. And so being a happy warrior, saying with a smile, uh, not just attacking the questioner, but just saying, okay, I, I understand why you're getting it. You've been spoon fed this uh, by people on the left in your classroom or on social media, but here's the truth and you deserve to hear the truth. It's amazing. It's like people stranded on a desert island. Uh, they want more. They want to hear the truth and that's our opportunity.